All right, metalheads, this is DJ Rem, and I have Fred from Serpent Cult. And Hi. Uh, did I say did I say that okay? Yeah, that was that was perfect. <laughs> okay, okay. I always, you know, sometimes bands' names aren't exactly what they seem, so I always want to make sure. So okay, how's it? No problem. So how's it going? Yeah, I'm fine, thanks. Uh, just got the album out a few months ago. I think it's just been released in USA, so I'm really excited about this. I don't know how it's going right now in USA. But I think, yeah, I'm, I'm glad that album has been out for a while. Excellent. I, I actually haven't really been playing it yet. I was kind of kind of holding back and waiting for the interview and then to really start playing it. Well, I'm, I mean, I'll start playing it before the interview now, but I, uh, so it's mo- mainly instrumental, right? Yeah, well, how that started, uh, a few, it, it's, it's, a, it's a long history to it. I wanted to play instrumental for, for a long time already. And, um, well, we were playing in the band called The Plague of Gentlemen, that was the band before Serpent Cult, and we were focusing a lot on instrumental songs uh, as well already back then. And then uh, the band split up in 2006. Uh, we just wanted to continue what we were doing, and, uh, well, while we were, while we were uh, founding the band Serpent Cult in 2006, uh, Michelle, our singer, joined the band. And, uh, well, we did two albums with her, she left the band eventually. And when she left, we thought it was a perfect opportunity to finally do that more instrumental approach we wanted to do for a while already. And, uh, yeah, we took our chance. Uh, there, it's not a completely instrumental album. There's two songs with, with some vocals. Uh, but the, the, the focus of the album is very much instrumental, yeah. Excellent. Now, how many songs are on the album? Because I only have four tunes. Oh, yeah, there's only four songs on the album. Okay, okay. Okay, <laughs> yeah, I, well, I'm just making sure I had it complete. I'm sorry? I'm just making sure I had the complete album, so, okay. Yeah, th- there's only four songs of that. Um, we, we, we wrote uh, much more than that. Uh, a, a year before we started recording the album, we even had another album ready. Uh, but we were really not happy with it. There were, we had seven songs. It was like the continuation of our previous album. It was Weight of Light number two. And we were really not happy with that. So what we did is we just threw 80% of that album in the bin and we started all over again and uh, the album turned out to be four very long epic songs and I think that was a great challenge to to try and condense everything you want to say into four songs only in one album. I think it worked out pretty good. Yeah, I I agree. I I sat and listened to all four songs last night and I I, I couldn't stop listening. So I totally enjoyed. (laughs) Thanks, thanks. (laughs) Yeah, so... What, um, where did you guys record this album at? Well, uh, for the first time, we recorded the whole album ourselves. Um, our previous album, we recorded in a, in a professional studio, but for this album, we, we didn't really have the budget or the resources to do this. And uh, we thought, well, why go in, go in a studio for two or three days and condense everything into that short amount of time? Let's just do it everything ourselves. And we had some friends who had more brains about sound recordings that we did and we, we asked them to help us and uh, so we recorded the whole album ourselves we did it some places in our rehearsal room we did it here in in our bedrooms everywhere <laughs> it was it was a great experience and it gave a lot of a lot of freedom to, to do whatever we want whenever we wanted and i would sure do it again for, for next recording yeah excellent yeah well and that's the beauty of technology today is you can pretty much do everything yourself if you want you don't you're not you're not bound to these recording studios that are going to charge you a lot of money. Exactly, exactly. And I must say, I used to be, I used to be more old-fashioned about this. I used to think that you had to go to a studio and spend a lot of money on, on expensive mixing tables and expensive amplifiers, but what, what counts is actually what you hear. And uh, I think what you hear on the album is what we wanted to express, and I, that's why I think it, it worked out perfectly fine, yeah. Yeah, no, and I agree. I, I tell you, because, you know, I interview a lot of bands and I listen to a lot of music sent in. And some bands use the real expensive studios, and some people do it themselves. And you know, obviously, you can tell the difference when people don't quite know what they're doing. But when people that are doing it themselves know what they're doing, I can't really notice any difference. So, I think I think a lot has to do with passion. And if you want to, if if you're passionate about what you're doing, you want to have it sounding right. And if you're not happy with it, you'll just try and try all over again. And we were really passionate about this album, and I think the way it turned out to be was what we wanted. 
Yeah, I, I have a friend, a local friend that he also has a band, and you know he records all his own stuff. And I know this one song he's been, God, it's been like a month. He keeps, <laughs> he he's like, I can't get it quite exactly how I want it. So, mm-hmm. <laughs> well, keep on trying. That's right. the only thing I can advise. <laughs> yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. Well, but I, my, yeah, my point there was passion. You know, to just want to produce the best quality. Yeah, product yeah, possible. Absolutely. Okay, so you guys are located in Belgium, correct? Yeah, we're in Belgium, but we're spread all over the country. I'm completely in the west of the country. Our drummer is completely in the east, and our bass player is in the middle. <laughs> it's it's a bit difficult for logistical reasons, but I can imagine things in America are a bit different. And I'm guess you, I guess you're used to these kind of situations, but for us, it's really not easy. Right. Having to drive two and a half hours for a rehearsal is not easy. Yeah, actually, uh, most bands I interview are not in the United States, so okay. I'm actually very used to this kind of setup where the band does not live close to each other. That's mm-hmm. it's kind of normal for me to hear that, actually. Okay, well, that, for those, I mean, it's we we grew as a band like that because in the beginning, uh, before we started Serpico, we all the all the people that play in Serpico nowadays. We used to play in another band before, and that uh, lineup came together just by lineup changes all the time. And when we found it Serpent Cult, we were just happy with all three together in the band, and we wanted to continue each other. But we just moved along all over the country, and uh, that's how uh, that's how we turned out to live out uh, live so far uh, away from each other. Right. So that yeah. Well, I was I was reading on your website last night about pretty much how. And correct me if I'm wrong. Obviously, if I say anything wrong, but from what I read, from my, what I took from what I read was is that basically you have your three core members, you guys, and you know, even in future recordings, you're going to just keep that that core Absolutely. and bring in other mu- musicians just to like basically help. Absolutely, and I want to keep it that way. I mean, we've we've worked with many people also on on this album, "More Raised by Wolves," uh, and we will do we will do the same in the future. Um, the, the three people that the, the Stephen Cozy and me we are so close together there's uh, there's not one person that, that could enter the band and, and, and change these things anymore and we are happy to, to work with other people but if we speak about Servant Code we speak about the three people uh, the, the three of us and no one else and that's how we want to work in the future I mean I am planning to I, I'm, I'm working on some songs right now for, for uh, other projects and when we are going to use these songs for Serpent Code this is going to be the, the, the this is going to be written together with the three of us. You know, this is not going to be the same. So what? How how do you guys go about your your process for for writing songs? Is there one person from the three well, that pretty much writes everything, or do you guys? Is it total collaboration? How do you guys do that? Um, mostly, mostly I I come up with a set of riffs, a set of ideas that have to fit in, in, a, in a certain atmosphere that I imagine, you know. And then we, I explain these riffs, I, um, I bring them into the band, and we jam for, for a few weeks in a row, and uh, we try to reach the atmosphere that we have in mind. And that's that's mainly how it works. The, the last thing we do, the very last thing, is if we add vocals, is actually adding the vocals. But w- what we do is we, we, rec- we record a very basic... Uh, layout of the song when we record and then we add up more and more layers uh, by time uh, so for example when we when we started recording Raised by Wolves uh, we just went went uh, went to record the basic tracks and we didn't even know how the album would sound in, uh, in the end because we were working on layer and layer on top of that so yeah we it just comes with time it's a natural evolution excellent so how long did it take you guys to, 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 I mean, to fully record and get it to where you're like, okay, this is ready to be released? Way too long. <laughs> <laughs> no, seriously, we were supposed to have it finished, I think, by the end of 2009, and it took us until the end of 2010 to be to be completely happy with it. So yeah, it, it was. It took about a year and a half, yeah, to have it finished. Which was way too long, in my opinion. We we really wanted to to stop it and, and move on to something new because if if an album lays too long there, if it it shouldn't last too long either, I think. Right. It probably it 
at, at some point, I would imagine it probably turns into more like a chore than really fun. Exactly, exactly. That's what I mean. If a, a recording is fun for a few months, but if it lasts for more than a year, the fun is gone, and then it's like you say, it's a chore, and you want to have it finished. But that was the thing. If you record it yourself, there's advantages and disadvantages. The disadvantage is that you have to do everything yourself. You have to plan your own recording sessions, and if you have to rely on other people, you have to plan everything yourself. Right. And that's why it took so long. Yeah. So what's the music scene like where you guys are at, or where you're at, I guess, since you guys live so far apart from each other? Oh, the music scene doesn't differentiate that much from, from part and part from Belgium, but honestly, I'm not really happy with the Belgian uh, metal scene. I'm not really interested, because... Uh, the Belgian bands, I'm sorry to say that, but they, uh, they know my opinion about the, about the Belgian bands, but I think most Belgian bands are a bit mediocre. They all sound like the mainstream bands we all hear, so there's a little inventiveness, and which is sad. Uh, it's, it, it's a sad thing for the Belgian scene. Yeah. Well, I tell you, that's the one thing that drew me to you guys, is you did not sound the same. You, you definitely have a very unique sound, so... That was, you know, Thank you. as a DJ, and, you know, I get a lot of music sent in, the, the, the station does, and wading through all the, uh, you know, for lack of a better term, the wannabes, and actually finding people that actually sound unique and actually can tell have passion for their music, it's it's kind of few and far between, so it's, it's refreshing to find a band like you guys that it's like, hey, these guys don't sound like anybody I've ever listened to. Well, thanks a lot, Spencer. It means a lot to me. It's a big compliment that we say that. We put we put a lot of emotion in the music, and what we actually want to do is tell our story, and that's the only thing that counts for us. We don't have any... We don't want to copy any idols or anything. We just want to tell our story, and that's basically what you hear on the album. That's very cool. Well, I, I get it. When I listen to it, I get it. So hopefully, well, uh, hopefully when I start I'm, playing... I'm, the I must say, I'm happy that... I'm happy that a lot of people uh, hear that because I was really a bit reluctant about the uh, about the reactions we would get with the new album because it was so different uh, from any stuff we've been, done before. And I thought that many people would think, oh, it's, gar- it's garbage what they've done. They, they tried to do something and they failed. But I'm glad that we succeeded in what we've done and that people appreciate what we, what we do with this album. Yeah, and it's funny because, you know, uh, it's... A lot of it's you know more instrumental and everything, and it, it, I was just listen. I was just talking to somebody. I think it was yesterday or the day before. And I was talking to somebody, and we were talking about metal. And they're like, you know, they're like, did you listen to the lyrics in that song? I'm like, you know, not really. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, I was listening to the music. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, so that's that's also one of the reasons why I like uh, what I like about instrumental music. I. We, we, in the band, we are, we have never been poets. We are not the kind of people that speak uh, in, in, uh, I mean, we don't want to bring a message in language. We don't want to bring a language, uh, a, a message uh, through, through lyrics. That's why we want to put as much emotion as possible in the music. And the, the few vocals and lyrics that are there, they, they are blended in in the music and they are like an instrument in, uh, in between all the other uh, musical instruments. And we try to add some value with the lyrics. The few lyrics that are there, they mean a lot to us. We put a lot of time into these lyrics, and um, but there are not too many. And I think you need to carry, keep it very small and, and meaningful. Yep. No, I, I agree definitely. So what? So what? Uh, what have been your over the years? What have been your musical influences? What? You know, what made you decide that you know music is definitely a passion that I want to uh, I want to carry on in my life? What? What was that defining moment for you, I guess? Oh, it's, it's, it's a long story, Spencer. I mean, I started listening to music when I was... Well, I started listening to, to heavy metal and hard rock when I was 12 years old, and well, I'm 34 now, so <laughs> it's definitely a passion. Uh, but things started a long time ago. It started with Iron Maiden, and I was mad of Iron Maiden when I was 12 years old, and I'm still mad about Iron Maiden, so nothing is ever going to change that. And I think they're my biggest source of, of inspiration even though you cannot hear it directly in our music. But uh, I think the, the older you get, the more inspired you get by different kinds of music, and the more your music matures as well. And that's why I think what the, the result is on this album, is that the more music we make with the years, the more our music has matured, and the more 
influences we get. And that's what you hear on the new album. There's much more influences than any music we made 10 or 15 years ago. Right. Yeah, and I and I definitely can appreciate the whole the whole maturing of the music because, you know, I, I can't play an instrument, I can't sing, I can't do any of that, but I tell you what, I love music, and when I listen to it, and as I get older, I'm 38, so I'm a little older than you, yeah. and, but for me, as I get older, I find, you know, I still love metal, I'm, I'm still, will always be a metalhead, but I find myself being maybe a little more picky and looking for, you know, I'm, I'm not into that, this, this metal, a lot of this new metal that's out there that's just, you know, there's 500 bands that all sound the same, I, I could really care less to listen to those people. Yeah, yeah, well, I think these days, well, it's an adv- like what we were just talking about, uh, any band can record whatever they want uh, with modern technology. It's an advantage and it's also a disadvantage. 20 years ago, it was a filter that bands who went into a, into a studio to record, they were mostly bands that were funded by a record label and they were mostly good. Now, any band can record anything, and yeah, there's a lot of shit bands on the market these days. Yeah. That's, that's a disadvantage. Right. Oh, yeah, the market's so saturated with bands. I mean, holy cow. Yeah, yeah, that's that's why I think we need to, well, I keep on looking for, for new gems every every time. Uh, I still love discovering new bands every day, and I'm surprised by new music. Also, outside of the metal scene, really. Uh, I'm surprised by, by new music I had never heard before, and it's inspiring me all the time. Uh, I'll tell you, just on a side topic here, I'll tell you a band, if you have not heard of them or listened to them, there's a band called Van Canto. Have you heard of them? No, I've never heard of them. They're, they're, a, German, they're a German band. They're, yeah. they're an a cappella metal band. They only use drums. They do a lot of covers. They've covered Sabaton, Metallica, and then they have a bunch of their own stuff. But okay. just just think of that. They're metal, but yet they're doing, you know, all the guitar sounds and everything in your mouth. It's, it's crazy. Oh, that's great. <laughs> so I would strongly encourage you, speaking of exploring new music, to check them out because they are amazing. Okay, sure do that. What's the name again? Um, Van Canto. V-A-N-C-A-N-T-O. Uh-huh. Okay, thank you. So just check them out. Not to get off on a tangent there, but that's this is the thing that I love about interviews is not only do, you know, do I get to talk to the band that I'm talking to, the members? But typically, I come across, you know, in the in the conversation, I, I I find out about bands that I've never heard of, you know. Yeah. You know, I get to tell you about bands that I've, you know, this Van Canto. I actually talked to them last week. They're really really cool guys. And oh, uh, it's it's a it's a it's a long story. Um, have you heard of our previous band, The Plague of Gentlemen? I have not. No. Okay. So what happened? Uh, uh, the people that play in Serpent Court right now, we joined the band in the mid uh, 2000 years, and uh, we did the first out. We, we joined the Plague of Gentlemen. Uh, that was an existing band. They existed for like 10 years already, and um, we recorded one album. It's called Primula Pestis. And um, when we started recording the second album, we we were going to call that album Serpent Court, and uh, the band split up in the middle of the recordings. And uh, when we started this band, we were looking for a name. And uh, then we thought, well, why not just use Serpent Cult? It sounds great. Right. And, uh, that, that We just went with that. There's no mystical occult meaning behind it. We just love the name. It sounds great. I like it, too. It has a real black metal sound kind of thing to me. Yeah, but it sounds, it sounds mystical. And... There's one thing what I thought there was a great name. I, I, have you read the book White Line Fever by, by Lemmy? No. Well, there's, there's a one anecdote where he says a band name has to sound great, and usually that comes with three syllables. And he says that you have motor head. And I thought, well, three syllables, that's serpent cult, so that matches. It's fine. Yeah. <laughs> Excellent. Excellent. So do you guys have any, do you have any shows or anything coming up? I mean, do you guys have any, are you doing anything on the road right now? I'm sorry, Spencer. I think the connection is really bad right now. Uh, can you hear me? Oh, yeah. You, I, I just didn't hear your question. I'm sorry. Uh, no, it's okay. So, do you guys have any shows coming up? Do you guys have anything on the road that you guys are going to be doing? No. Well, for this album, we decided <laughs> we decided not to do too many shows. We, we have done a whole lot of shows with Way of Light. We toured all over Europe. We toured all over North America. And uh, we, we thought, let's just 
relax a bit. We wanted to con concentrate on this album in the first place on the album. And uh, we would see what would come next, but our pr priority was definitely not to do a, a tour with this album. We we decided that we will see what comes up with this album, uh, but we will not do any tours. We will do a, a few one-off gigs, and we will con concentrate on on, uh, on writing music. That's what we do best. And <laughs> so for this album, we decided not really to go on tour. Well, that's cool. I'm sure that can get tiring as well. So. Well, it's it's a decision because uh, there's so many things happening in our lives. Uh, the two other guys in the band they play in other bands as well. We have other priorities, and Surf and Cult is my personal musical priority. Uh, but my priority right now, musically, is writing music and not not playing uh, live shows. So right now, I'd rather enjoy the process of writing a new album, right, and then play then play shows all over Europe again. Excellent. Well, you know, when, when you have, so, and also the guys, the other guys in the band that have their little, their, you know, their other other projects going, if, um, let them know if they're interested in getting some airplay for their stuff to uh, tell them to hit me up via email. Oh, yeah, 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 sure. Do, do you know their other bands? There, there's our, Stephen, our bass player, he plays in a black metal band. It's called, uh, Alcardale. Yeah, actually was, look. I actually looked them up. I was... I was doing a little. I did a little more research on you guys than I do normal normally for bands. Usually, I just kind of come into an interview and not really have even done a whole lot of uh, background research. I I just I find it more um, interesting if I don't. But I didn't really know a whole lot about you guys, so I was trying to trying to just get a good a good feel for the band and what you guys have been through and everything. And so I I saw the post on Facebook, I think it was, and I checked them out and they I like them too. Oh, good, good. Well, I like them. They, they, they're really successful lately. I mean, they've been playing a lot of shows. They've done a new album lately, so things are going very, very well for them right now. So, yeah, good. So, where can people buy this album if they want to buy it? Um, <laughs> well, in, in America, I should ask you because I have no clue. But in Europe, you can find it in as good as every shop you want. Uh do you have a clue where you can buy it in America? Because I don't know. I'm going to do a search right now, and I'm going to find out. We'll just see. You can still hear me, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. I'm going to try Best Buy because they're our biggest chain over here. We'll see what they got going on. Next time I'm in the local record shop, I'll check them, too. Okay. I was just in there about a week. I love to go to the local record shop and just dig through CDs and see what they have that I've never heard of. Yeah, I don't I don't see them on Best, see it on Best Buy. I'll have to do some research. So can, okay. can people buy well, it? Like on, I, I, can't, I, can't really, I don't really know where you can find it in the U.S. I, I didn't even know it was out in the U.S. until one week after... We've been, it's been out there, so we've been told a bit late. <laughs> <laughs> so can people buy it? Like, can they buy it digitally, like on Amazon and iTunes and stuff? Yeah, absolutely. I, I would advise anyone to do that because that's the way I discover new music every day these days as well. I think this whole internet thing is amazing if you want to discover new bands. Can't agree more. So is there anything else about you guys that you'd like to tell the world? Well, uh, I'll, what I can say is that uh, enjoy your music. I'm really glad that people are enjoying it. Uh, the people who heard it are, uh, do like our music. It shows that people are open-minded to, to some new things. Uh, from our side, we're really looking forward to doing new stuff in the future. I will be even... I mean, people who thought that we have finer, final uh, direction in music uh, will be proven wrong because our new album is going to sound even more different now. And I think that is the whole thing for us, is to keep on reinventing ourselves to make good music. Yep, you, you got You can't keep it the same, it gets stale. Excuse me? So if, you don't, if you don't change things up a little bit, things get stale and just sound the same. Yeah, well, you know, we, the first two albums we did with Certain Cove were in the same vein. And I thought, if we do that again, it would just become a gimmick. That's not what you... I mean, we need to... 
we don't want to copy ourselves all the time. We want to be inventive. We want to be creative. That's the whole thing about making music, about finding this creative spark. And that, that's why we want to keep on reinventing ourselves all the time as well. Very cool. Well, thanks a lot to yourself, Benson. So, Sorry. Yeah, I, I really appreciate you taking to, taking the time to, uh, to, to, to get with me and, and talk. And I look, well, I look forward to, I look forward to future music from you guys, and I look forward to uh, hearing it and playing it, and and hopefully we can uh, when that you know when the next stuff comes out, we can do this again. I'd love to talk again. Okay, thanks a lot, Spencer. Thanks so, for your time as well. Yeah, and make sure you tell everybody, tell the other two guys in the band that I said hello, please. I will sure do that. No problem. So, keep making great music, dude. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Okay. Well, you have a great day, okay?